we would love to turn this into a um, not so much of a vertical conversation but more of a little workshop as we prepare um for the topic that is uh crafting your it's school setting and crafting your road into 2024. um to be honest with you it, when i was thinking about and Wilhelmina and i were bouncing back with ideas i thought it was a little bit premature to talk about goal setting for 2024 but you go to the supermarket and the first thing you see when the doors open you don't even see halloween stuff anymore i don't know your side of the world but here you go there and you start seeing christmas stuff already so i was like what we still have like another quarter of the year left so as of today we have 75 days left of 2023 what <laughs> it's over uh and it's really 10 weeks 10 weeks left of the year so that we can we can prepare to close with a with a with a golden ribbon but also to prepare so that we can open up 2024 with the right foot and so that we can we can set our, our path for the following year and i would love to tell you that i'm doing this and i don't pretend to be like sitting on my high chair and telling you oh this is how i do it and this is what works for me there's there's things that have worked for me that i will gladly share with you but please please help me out so that if you guys there's something that you've done in the past that has worked for you and that you would see that would help the people either on this call or the ones that will hear it in the uh, YouTube video later. Um, that was going to be of great, great, um, very fruitful and of great help to other people as well. Okay. Um, so I don't know um, if you guys have ever done this or not, but um, there's a lot of, if you go into social media, there's a lot going on about um, vision boards and, and, and creating goals and journaling and, and writing stuff down. But there's, there should be and there must be something magical about writing stuff down, right? Um, I've never done it in the computer. I've always done it with a calendar or a piece of paper. But there's just something when the, when the pencil hits the paper, when you write it down. Um, and today we'll be going through some of those steps, okay? So at any point in time, please feel free to raise the hand. Stop me, interrupt me. There's very few of us right now on the call. So feel free to interrupt and then just uh, jump in if you ever have a, a comment to say, okay? Well, I mean, are you good? <laughs> so we're made of um, old school stuff, so it makes us more committed if we write down our goals rather than um, typing Perfect. it in the computer. Perfect. So the first thing I had in mind was understanding the concept of goal setting. Um, what are the goals and why are they important? And once, and this is going to sound like a bumper sticker, but I think it's very true. Once I, hi Jamie, welcome. Um, once I, I was telling the team, Jamie, if you want to hop in any time during the call um, to pitch in any of your ideas or contributions, you're more than welcome to. Uh, so understanding the concept of goal setting, what are goals and why are they important? I would say this bumper sticker that really caught my attention once was it said, uh, a goal without a, without a plan is just a wish. And there's a difference between your Amazon wish cart and <laughs> between and your goal setting vision board, right? So we have to write down, and I've never done it on the computer, but maybe this next year I will, but if there's a magic behind it, writing it down and seeing the vision in front of you. Um, maybe it holds you accountable. Maybe it's something that you have to see every day. Maybe it's just the fact of writing it down that you're seeing it more and louder. It's like when you're reading and you read something out loud with, with a loud voice, not with your interior voice you understand it more right so um why are they important and what's the difference between a goal and a wish it's just that it's just having that actual plan behind it it's having the the timeline it's having the deadline of when when it has to be completed so it holds you accountable and it has a plan behind it it's not just like a whim or a wish that you have it's not your amazon shopping cart it's it's something that you and it could be i mean types of goals different types of goals i mean it, it could be personal it could be financial it could be professional it could be simply waking up 30 minutes earlier this next year right and we all seem to wait until the new year's and january 1st rolls around and the gyms are packed and everybody's like looking into losing weight and <laughs> a lot of the stuff sometimes it feels like it just starts for the first few weeks and then everything falls on the stairs and it's like a snowball effect that one bad day leads into another and then all of a sudden we let go right and then it's not something that holds you accountable not something that you continue pursuing throughout the year so it's not reachable it's something that maybe maybe we had to plan it way ahead of time not just wait until the last minute but also making baby steps um there was a book that i just read recently and it was it was called the fox the hound and the and the and the horse i think that was the name with the mole the mole the hound and the horse and there was one little phrase that said 
oh, what do I do? It's like, I can't, I, I don't know what to do. Like, there's so much in front of me. There's so much that the, the, the hand was saying. There's so much in front of me that I can't take a, I can't take the, I don't know where I'm going or where, where this life is leading. There's so much. I feel so overwhelmed. There's so much to do. And then he gets stopped and he gets told, you know what? Can you see your next step? And then the hand, would, um, the fox would say, yes, I can see my next step. And then the hound st- uh, tells her, it's like, well, that's it. Just take the next, next step. And with the goals, I think it's just the same thing. We just have to, personally, I think this next year, I'm just going to take it one small step at a time rather than trying to accomplish and, and change the world like the pinky and the brain, right? <laughs> so it's something that I think it's, I'm going to try differently. Just make them smaller bite sizes so that they're a little bit more, more um, attainable. But also, um, while we're setting them, we need to understand the reason and the difference between a short-term goal and a long-term goal. And I would love to tell you that I read it in, in the Washington Post or the New York Times, but it was actually a TikTok video that I watched, and it was saying the difference between a long-term goal <laughs> and a short-term goal. And a long-term, we're talking 10 years, right? How you see yourself and how, what you're portraying yourself to be in, in five years or 10 years' time. But it's just peeling off those layers of the onion and saying, okay, this is going to be in 10 years. But what's after 10 years is way too much, right? So maybe you can make like a super general one, a big one, something that looks, and, and I challenge you to, to dream big, right? And to make it, make it big, a super big one. But after 10 years, you peel off the next layer and then it's five years. Peel off the next one and it's three years. And it still seems super far away. Then the next one's one year ahead. That one could be like, it's, it's typically what it is on the new year resolution. You're thinking what you're going to do for the following year. But if we continue peeling down, you can go into a quarter, right? And divide the years into four quarters, which is what we're doing right now. We're close in the last quarter of 2023. So it's just dividing next year into four equal three month quarters. And then after that, you can do a month, you can do a week, you can do a day. And then even then you can do the, 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 the person on TikTok was doing a day today. What can I do today to accomplish my daily goal? What can I do daily to accomplish my weekly goal? What can I do weekly to accomplish my monthly, my um, quarterly, my yearly, my three year, and so on and so forth. And at the end of the day, it's those little steps that are paving the road until we get to the to the bigger scheme and the, and the bigger uh, picture, which is the 10 year goal that we're trying to accomplish. I don't know about you, but to me, it seems daunting the, the 10 year, right? Um, because to be honest, like every, and, and you have to be very, I think at least myself, I'm going to be very, very honest with it because Sometimes I think I sabotage them by thinking, no, I can't think everything monetarily. Or no, I can't think anything, everything so selfishly about myself, about wanting to travel. About. But then if you ask yourself the reasons why, like I want to travel because I want to visit family. So it's really about the family time as well, right? Um, of course, I wouldn't mind about the first class, first class ticket <laughs> if I'm flying, right? But it's those little things that I'm, I think we just have to be honest and put them down and saying, this is how I, what, what I see myself earning in 10 years time. This is how much money I want to see coming in in three years' time. This are, and then maybe not monetarily, maybe maybe just the routines and, and the habits that we have. I want to start waking up 30 minutes earlier next year. And maybe, I mean, for me, like I really struggle. I can't be out of bed like before 7 a.m. There's no way. But, but maybe next year I'm going to start doing 6.45, right? And maybe I'm going to do one minute earlier every week right so it doesn't feel as as horrible as waking up all of a sudden one hour earlier um hopefully by the 10 year i'm going to reach the 5 a.m club no promises there <laughs> but i mean everybody does their own goals and mine is not waking up at five in the morning but um this is where we have to be like super honest and, and very very down to earth into into what we're doing um <laughs> The science behind goal setting, and and this is what I was um, speaking about, the psychology behind setting a goal and achieving them, and um, I something that we used to do on ships, we used to have a calendar that was given to us, and sometimes it was printed for us, and we would have it on our, like, put on the magnet on the wall. Um, unfortunately, here in land, you can use magnets on the wall. Um, Wilhelmina, you're missing out on that. But a magnet, you didn't have to pin anything on the wall. A magnet would just hold everything to any wall around your cabin. And, and it was... One on the wall. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. But th- there's, something, there's something magical about, about scratching something. And, and I think I, I heard it somewhere as well. But the, it gives you brain dopamine every time that you tick something off on your checklist or sometimes that you scratch it off and you feel like accomplished right and for the only 
the thing I can think of this is like once I was trying to lose weight and getting back in shape and I joined this, um, I don't know if you ever heard about Beachbody and I joined one of these programs and it was like a boot camp with insanity. Um, of course, my knees wouldn't, wouldn't cooperate. So I started with T25 and it was just 25 minutes a day. And, and of course, the plan was like a 90 day um, total change and, and make go over and, and, and revolutionize your body in 90 days. And I just printed it out and I had it on the wall. And all of a sudden I decided one day, okay, I'm going to start today. Scratched it off. And at the end of the day, every time you scratch it off, there was so much accomplishment that that feeling and that dopamine that you bring gets when you get things done. All of a sudden you're like, okay, tomorrow I want to do it again. And then I would just cover it the whole month, right? I would just uncover it every week so I could do one week at a time. All of a sudden I had two weeks and all of a sudden I had three weeks. Um, lo and behold, 90 days later, I, I think I accomplished the goal that I wanted, right? And then it became kind of like a like an addiction, trying to to accomplish more and more and more. And then all of a sudden, believe it or not, um, I think uh, I think Michelle, I think Michelle, you saw me when I was in my in my health. Um, <laughs> I was like a healthy freak and doing smoothies and going to the gym. And and I wish I would have kept it right now. My energy levels, my focus um, um, percentages, it, it was through the roof. I like I felt extremely accomplished. And it all started with having things put up on the wall. Um, I know Barbara does this. She has like post-it notes that she has them by her makeup where she does her makeup in the, in the, um, vanity mirror. Um, I've seen a lot of, and heard a lot of people and we, we've heard it, right? I, I feel like we know the theory and, and yet here I am, another person telling you, okay, it works, but I'm sure that everybody here can share a story or two of how this has worked. Um, sometimes it's a reminder that post-it note, sometimes it's, but there's, there's a, there's a, a method to that madness. And I think that's, that's part of the, of the, um, the science and of the goal setting behind it, how it affects your motivation and your behavior throughout the whole time that you're doing this. Um, I also think that, that the goals have to be smart. They have to be specific. They have to be measurable. Um, they have to be relevant, right? Um, and, and time bound. You have to have like a, a, a timeline that you say, okay, this is by this time, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to accomplish. And, and although I was going to wait for this one until the very end, we also have to give credit and room for reflecting on failures, right? Maybe you don't start it. And, and I think failures, this is in, in all the research that I've done, it, they always mention it at the end, trying to evaluate and, and, uh, and recognize where it didn't work out. But I really, I mean, sometimes you don't have to wait until the end because a lot of the times it doesn't work out in the beginning. Maybe you, you want to start doing it on the first week and, and you fail on day number three, right? Because um, whether you wanted to start eating healthier and then you dig in and you cave in into the um, snacks at midnight and, and stuff that really sabotages and, and your perfectionist mind sometimes won't allow you. But at the end of the day, it's just it's just being able to learn from those failures and, and wake up again and not wait until 2025, just knowing, okay, I'm going to get up again um, and, and try to try take another stab at it so that I can continue down the, the road. Um, consistency versus intensity. Do you want to speak a little bit about that one, Wilhelmina? What? Uh, it's a, um, it's um, the one that uh, you have said earlier that um, we have to have a measurable goal that we will do every day rather than attack it on one day and then stop so i remember that um barbara or we i have read in the one of your book rec recommendations that atomic has habit that um wherein we have a valley wherein we cannot um i mean something that we are doing is not um reflecting or we are not reaching our goals or what we are not seeing improvement but then that last meal that we are continually doing will um make um, our dreams or our goals are reachable or unfold bit, uh, on bit on our, uh, right in front of us. So we have to continue pushing on until we reach that goal. Right, beautiful. So it's that, that consistency. It's just being consistent rather than but rather than keeping a hundred percent every day. It's just just showing up every day, right? It's just being there every day for you for your goal. Brilliant. Sorry, guys, I lost my headphone. Um, Anyone else feel so good so far? Anybody else wants to share if they ever have done this, if this is a common practice in your life, in your lifestyle, something that you do, something that you would like to share, please feel free to stop us, okay? Um, we would love to hear what you guys think about this and, and if you've ever um, done it. Go ahead, Jamie. Hey, good morning. Yeah, like morning, for Jamie. me, like uh, I used to do is like put a sentence on my alarm. Like, no, like you'll see the beep, 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 beep. But you'll see in something like today will be a great day or something like that. 
Okay, awesome. So, so the alarm doesn't sound like wake up, then you, it's really an alarm, but then it has exactly. like a sentence or a phrase. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Good. Nice idea. Um, Miss Ivy? So with me- No, no, nothing, nothing before you even start. Congratulations on the wedding, okay. Miss Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> big, big congrats. Thank you so much. All right. So um, with me, uh, when I well, when I left ships, uh, as we are so used to have this busy days and we, we get so much done when we're on board. So changing from this to the quietness of the day to day life. Um, of course, it, it felt really nice in the beginning, like, oh, my God, I can wake up whatever time I want. I don't have anything to do. That's great. But then that feeling of like not accomplishing things or not doing anything you start to you know to kind of this happens even on vacation right for the crews to uh, working on board and on vacation like the first days they just want to sleep and then they're already missing the rush of the ship so for me what worked uh, was to really day by day like taking it slowly and having this daily task list and I remember that that's why I gave you like a little thumbs up because just having that on the paper with the list of things that are that I was like ticking off that that made me feel so great like in the end of the day to look at that huge list with things like crossed like yeah you know my, my days are being productive that's it and of course like when we're talking about staying at home there are small things such as you know backing up your photos from your phone cleaning the house or you know or all those things that you're postponing to do for years and you you had to do it anyways um so yeah and and now uh something that jamie said and i remember like that's something that i also do myself and my husband now we, we do it very often we put alarms but we put alarms to remind us to do things so for example uh Again, on the daily tasks, but if I don't have a paper next to me, we're like, okay, tomorrow we need to do this. So tomorrow, 11 a.m., alarm rings for like, call someone, you know? So yeah, uh, um, that for me was very much needed. And of course now, well, since we just got married, <laughs> we of course have to make plans as a couple as well. So we extended this to now to the two of us, you know, financial goals. So how long, does he has to stay on the ship for us to reach this financial goal? And what are we going to do with that? Blah, 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 blah. So we actually put that in Excel because, again, like, just like you said, if we see that, we are able to focus, you know. And for him, this last contract was his first time having this in mind and really helped him, like, not spending money in the crew bar or not spending money with internet or, you know, just, uh, uh, that's it. He had that goal. I have to save that much per month. So, yes, uh, for sure, it is uh, very important to have that written. So uh, you have in your, uh, uh, in your mind, you know, that's, 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 uh, that's how I'm going to get there. Brilliant, beautiful, and and you mentioned it's 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 writing it down, right? It's it's having it, seeing it, right? Because I've tried it, I've tried to do it digitally. Um, it it works sometimes, but it, I don't get that same feeling when I just see it there and then I erase it. Rather than maybe those apps that you just like scroll to the side and then you see it go whoosh and then it disappears. I, you get like a little bit of dopamine, but nothing beats the scratching it off a of paper, right? Or the or the ticking it off with the. It's there's something about it, and uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm old school, but there's definitely there's definitely that that beauty about writing it down. But at the end of the day, it's just being able whatever works for you, whatever really gets you that that high in your brain and that 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 chemical that gets released in your brain when when you accomplish something, and then it becomes addictive. That they, so much so that you want to continue doing something, um, or or going on to the next one, like you say. And right now with the wedding. I'm pretty sure that in, in your personal life as well, it was it was full of to-do lists and daily things you needed to do and things you needed to accomplish on a monthly basis before the before the deadline. Yes, for sure. Uh, well, basically, in the past three four months, my to-do lists were just uh, about wedding stuff. <laughs> but, but yeah, it, it really worked. I'm happy with the results. Wedding was a success. Without a wedding planner, I was uh, I was our wedding planner. So uh everything worked well i guess uh that's uh that's a lesson i take for life to be honest you know to just do that with anything i want to accomplish 
Beautiful, beautiful. And and taking your wedding as an example, right? Or taking the the what I just mentioned about the gem. That was also um I'm gonna add another another example that was during the first ten years, no, the last ten years that I was on ships, um uh we were building a home. Uh we bought a piece of land and we were building a home back home, I mean, so that we could have a house or somewhere to live and something tangible so that we could have after we were done with ships. And uh and all of a sudden, I had this theory that in the beginning I was running away from something, but then towards the end of the contract, so after after a couple of months on board, you have to start running towards something. And when I started running towards something rather than away from something, that's when it gave it purpose, right? So I think there's something very important in, in your goal setting is that you have to check your core, core values, right? So it has to be something meaningful. If you're doing goals for something that are not, it's not within registered within your core values, it's not something you believe in, it's not something you really you you won't give it it won't you won't be as passionate about it so building a home for me was my number one priority and and i would say i had like a plan for the finances every time it came right so this month we have to pay this much and this is what we need to do and everything was laid out in an excel mind you that one they couldn't do it in paper it was all an excel file but just sticking up those boxes and it's what held us accountable and we were able to to finish but it's just another thing about it is just speaking life into it um because i would love to tell you that everything was just like beautiful and it was just a walk in the park but there were there were months that we were up high there were months that we were super low and and there were years that were just completely horrible and towards the end it's like we're never going to make it we're not going to finish finish this halfway through the process we were thinking we bit off more than we could chew there's no way that we're going to finish this project and and we started changing i we heard a podcast and we started changing the the the, the the narrative we had about it because every time we had friends or family come over to see how the house was 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 going they would be like oh yeah it's true and we would tell them it's like oh it's not nearly close we're going to be done by 2080 20, 2082 2083 and it started becoming the joke of my friends and our, our close friends and our family and they would start saying oh yeah it's going to take you another 10 years and every time they would visit just to see how it was being built they would say like yeah no you guys are right there still has a lot to go so of course this was um, unmotiv- not, we, we were not getting motivated. We weren't getting any any out of this. And it was, it was year after year that we started learning. And, and one, all of a sudden, one day we said, you know what, let's stop this. Let's stop this um, narrative and let's start saying, we're nearly done. We're done. And speaking, saying we're finished. Now it's gonna be done this year, we're completing it. Lo and behold, I can't even tell you if it happened within a year or a year and a half, but the house was fully done and furnished and, and it was i don't know how it happened but but you start speaking life into the into your thoughts into your ideas and i don't want to fall into that magical speech of saying everything you think of can happen or you can be anything you want to be i don't know i'm i'm, I'm not a firm believer of that i mean there's there's you can be the best you can be but i mean as much as i would love to sing if i don't have a voice i mean i can learn how to sing but i'm going to be the best singer ever right i can't or i can't there's skill sets that we're born with, there's talents that we have. So I'm a firm believer that you can become the best in those talents and continue polishing them and, and, and building them. So with that said, I think that the goals have to be meaningful and they have to be within your core values. They have to motivate you and, and it's something that you find um, inspiration in having them done. At the end of the day, it's for your life. It's for, you are, you are the main character in, in that in that um, stage, right? So it's those goals as, as um, as selfish as it may sound sometimes to, to just everything. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's about your life. And sometimes we sit down and then we do it for companies. We do it for the companies we work with and the, and, 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 the, and, the, and the people that we work with and the companies we work for. But if we do it for that, why don't we do it for ourselves? Why are we not doing it for our own finances, for our own uh, well-being, for our own personal growth and for our own um, professional growth as well? So just the same, it has to happen for, for, for us as well. Um, so we mentioned the financial side, we mentioned the, um, the, uh, uh, the healthy side, the health side of the goal setting just as well. Um, and especially now and, and lately, um, I think after the pandemic, he gave us a lot of awareness of, of mental health. And um, uh, I don't know about you guys, but now I'm a little bit more aware of when people are going through anxiety or, or just completely overwhelmed in their senses because it's a constant bombardment to all of your senses. Just any given day, you go out there in the world and you start driving and you, you see, you hear, you, you think, and there's so much going on every single day, so much going on that you have to, 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 to acknowledge that 
keeping and maintaining your mental health and your mental peace has to be a number one priority for every one of us during the next year as well and, and during the rest of this year. So I think it's important to have a, um, the well-being not only for your physical but also for your, for your mental health. So I think um, that's also another part of the, of the four parts, your financial, your mental health, and your well-being. I would say well-being, financial, personal, and, and professional. I would say those would be like the four areas that have worked for me in the past. Um, what else? I was going to mention about adapting to change. Uh, something that we know very well, it was our bread and butter for for, for us that were worked on ships. Um, and even here on land, I find it that adapting to change for your goals, I mean, it's always, it's always wise to be able to adapt halfway through, right? Um, as much as we would like to just steer the wheel and then just keep down the same boat as we wish, sometimes life will take you on a different path and, and, and halfway through you'll realize that there's stuff that we have to be flexible, right? It has to be, um, I think of it as of the, like, the, like the wheels on the, on the um, what do you call this? Um, back in the 1800s, the 1700s, those, uh, what the horses used to, to drag, what do you call those? Help me out, people. Um, you would get on that wagon and then the horse used to drag it and I, come again? Like a carriage? Yes, yes, a like carriage, Michelle, yes. So like a horse dragging the carriage and then you're on top of it and then we imagine the wheel being of, of, of wood. Imagine how it felt to the people that were on the top of the carriage as fancy as posh as they would look just going through holes and potholes on the road. Of course, like everything was bumpy, right? But just imagine now being not in a carriage or in the same carriage, but with having a suspension and having rubber tires for like Mercedes type suspension. Those people on board, like they, you would, they wouldn't even shake, right? Because there's so much, it's flexible. So when, when I think of flexibility with your goals, I just think of those tires, right? I mean, they could be wooden that, so that they, they're stiff and then you feel every single bump, or they could just be cushioned and, 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 and moldable so as they go through the bumps, you don't feel it as much. So same thing with our goals. We have to be able to, to, to learn, not at the end of the year, like I mentioned, or not at the end of the day, but throughout the day, saying maybe, maybe this day is not going the way I want it to, but let's see where this is going to. This is where this is taking us. And just, just keeping a flexible mind, keeping up. Um, we, we know what happened on ships, right? We, we had our goal setting and we couldn't, we had to plan as much as we could, but as little as they allowed us, because as much as you had your sign off date, and that was always written somewhere in the calendar, this is my sign off date. <laughs> you will not let me lie. But that sign off date happened maybe, um, a third of the time, <laughs> the other two thirds, it was always bumped up or, or pushed back or pushed forward, but it was never the same. So you had to give yourself that mentality and maybe it happened. If in your first contract it happened, you would be like devastated and bumps like, oh no, I was really supposed to sign off that day. And I had told my friends and family, you learned from it. And then your second contract, you would just pencil it in. You wouldn't have it penned in because you knew that you probably had to erase it and you had to stay flexible because, and you wouldn't make plans or buy tickets or all that just until you were actually home. Right. So it's, it's that um, resilience, but at the same day, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's that flexibility that we have to build up as we're setting up our goals. Um, so far, so good. Anybody else, anything to else to share? Do we agree? Do we agree so far? And again, this is not something that I'm telling you. Oh, this is what works, and this is. It's just me being very honest and putting flat out on the table what has worked for me. Um, and I also wanted to check with you if you also agree with with the with the magic behind writing th stuff down and being able to visualize it and see it in front of you um, as a plan laid out in front of us on a daily basis. Um, another important one, and, and one that Barbara always uh, mentions, is uh, having that bottle of champagne in the fridge just ready for a celebration. Uh, maybe we have one big goal, uh, maybe it's a small one, and maybe it's not a bottle of champagne every day. I mean, I would love to have a bottle of champagne every day to celebrate that I made it through another day, <laughs> but maybe it's something that we, we, you do once a month, right? Or maybe something that we do towards the end of the year, but it's celebrating those successes. I mean, right, it's, it's, it's celebrating the, your small wins, right? It's, it's just taking it, taking those little things and, and, and making it, um, I said it. You're the you're the main character in your play. You're the center stage in your in your stage. So it's just celebrating and, and speaking words of life to yourself and what you're doing and where you're getting. Um, lately, I've been I've been reading and hearing a lot about speaking things as if they already were, as if they're already happening. Not saying and and sometimes we have to like, oh, today's going to be a great day. 
But lately I've been reading and, and I've been hearing um, the people that I follow and, and social media, they say, no, today is a great day. So it's telling your brain, like you tell your brain, no, it's already, it already is, right? It's not going to happen. Tomorrow's not going to be a great one. Right now, it's a great day already. So it's it's that speaking faith into into things and, and, and something about doing it in, in a loud voice. Um, you heard her, we heard her grandmas tell us, right? Speak to the flowers when you water them. They love it when you talk to them and they grow better. And I don't know if that's around the world, but at least in my side of the world, um, you will never hear me talk to plants. But I know that grandmas used to do it. And sometimes I'll hear my mom talking to her plants as she's watering them. But uh, but yes, I'll tell you, I, I kill all the plants in my house. <laughs> so maybe maybe that's what that's what's missing. But the, the beauty and the power of a spoken word is, I think, it's just as equivalent as the as the beauty and the power of a written word and, and scratching off something off your off your list. Um, and then the last one was um, along with the celebrating towards the end of um, the goal setting. It's the it's the reflection of failures, right? It's the the lessons learned the best practices, um, recognizing and celebrating the achievements that we have along the way, but also learning from the failures and the setbacks so that we can improve the future of our goal setting. It's, um, it's, uh, and it's only what makes us wise, right? It's, it's the being able to, loving to fail, right? And, and we've all seen those videos in, in, in YouTube and, and, and social media of the little kid that, that wants to try. There was one, um, there's one that I loved. It was, it was a, a five-year-old that his dad came home. It's like, hey, dad, dad, dad. Can we play that game where you where you throw the ball and then I, I pretend to catch it and then you tell me great job great job and and it really it really touched me because the kid wasn't asking to play catch the, the kid wasn't celebrating the kid just wanted to play where he was being celebrated just for trying and that that to me, I loved it because the kid which it, it brought so much to him that that that's exactly what we do when we're little kids and even to to the people that we grow into being it's it's the fact of of, of that celebration of, of trying right of, of not so much accomplishing but just being even if you're trying to do it just showing up um like Wilhelmina said uh, it's the consistency versus the intensity it's maybe not every day it's going to be a hundred percent maybe some days are going to be a hundred some days are going to be a ten some days are going to be a five but at least you showed up, right? At least we showed up and then we tried, we attempted, and it's just recognizing, okay, maybe today I failed, maybe today we, I didn't do it. But it's that, those failures that will teach us how to how to prepare for the next one. Um, and again, I'm not telling you this sitting from my high chair because I conquered this and I broke the code and, and I know how to do it. Nope, just another human showing up every day, trying my best. Um, but I know that this, uh, and there's 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 wisdom into learning from other people's um, mistakes and, and successes and there's so much so many resources out there that that we have to take them into account to, into account and and learning there's there's only one life i can live right but if i can learn from other people that are living simultaneous and alternative lifestyles and i can learn from them so it doesn't happen to me sometimes i tell my my, my family i was like well I don't, there's a saying in my country saying, if, if it doesn't, it, you will never understand it until it happens to you. And I was like, well, I don't want that stuff to happen to me. I want to learn it now that it's happening to you. So it doesn't ever happen to me. Um, I don't have time in this world to experience every single experience, right? So I'm going to experience it as, as limited as I could, but I'm going to learn and try to grasp as much knowledge that I can from other people, um, especially people that have dedicated themselves to this. Um, and sometimes, with, from generation to generation. So just putting it out there is stuff that I know that has worked for others and, and it's the stuff that it's out there at our, our fingertips for information that can work for us just as well. Um, <laughs> I broke the code, Sarah. I don't, I don't think I broke the code. <laughs> uh, but um, I don't know, does anybody else have any, any um, best practices to share or any, any um, things that you do that have worked for you? Go ahead, Ms. Jamie. Um, I want to say something about the thing that you just said about learning from the others because I think it's really important because sometimes we think that the things that we know is the only way, you know, like um, because I studied this, so this is the way that you should do it. And it's not like that. We need to be open all the time to learn from someone else because sometimes it's like, okay, for me, the sky is blue, right? But maybe from the place that you are right now, you can see it in another color. So it's like to be open for that kind of things and that teach you every time. Like for me, I try to get like 
that chance to know everyone to learn and sometimes it's like you see like right now in this age i just realized that this can happen so it's it's really good to know that the knowledge from everyone is really important and that help you like for example when i was in the in the ship and um everyone get the same certification but everyone has different way to approach the client so when i was there i learned some things from different cultures like they are like you know like if you check this as you can see if they are interested or not or something like that in the personality and you see it and one day i try i say oh my god they were right you know but if you don't give yourself the chance to learn from someone else you will be limited you know you will be every time in the same place so for me i think that's really important so yeah absolutely absolutely thank you jamie mr sebas Cobas. thank you for joining us sorry guys i'm traveling but i couldn't i couldn't stop um i couldn't pass this up so no one thing that i heard that it was like for me genius that you know in life you have to have the 33 33 33 so 33 percent of the people that we surround with uh, we have to be teaching and we are giving to them, right? That like we are giving to them and we know that we have an opportunity to add value to them. And 33%, usually they are in our level and giving and, and taking, you know, in the same. And then 33, we have to look. And because if we are 100% giving, we are codependent. Right, because we, we transform it into, into that thing like yeah, we feel good being above everybody else and like you know, giving and, and teaching people. But it's not healthy in the long run. We become codependent. If we are at the same level, we never grow. And we never um we never contribute. And and that thirty three percent of like somebody else above us and just to you're breaking up Sebas. you're breaking up a little bit you started breaking up towards the last 33 <laughs> percent uh. Okay. okay. Um, tell, tell, tell us I mean about just tell us about the last thirty two percent. I didn't miss that. I missed that one. So the last thirty three percent is the people that uh, we we learn from. You know, the people that we learn and they are value to us. Brilliant. So thirty three percent we are value. Six percent they are in our in our same level. We give and take, you know, every day. And 33, they are, they are maybe a step ahead. They live a little bit more. They have a different experience, and they want to contribute to our life. Very oh, interesting. I found that formula, and I thought, well, yeah. Very interesting. Sorry, I'm in an airport. Sorry. It's okay. Thank you, so Thank you, guys. Thank you, um, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Go ahead. I think sometimes you also need to think about the goals that other people have for you um, because I noticed this with the last company that I had um, like I had certain things that I wanted to accomplish and the managers I had <laughs> they had goals for me and they just kept going oh no you just need to do this like you just I need you to just look over this stuff and I just want you to do this so that you can be ready, you know, to do my job. And I was like, no, that's not what I want. That's not my goal. And they're like, no, 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 it's fine. Until I had one manager who was like, you know what? I'm just going to show you how to do my job because I think it's easier than you think it is. <laughs> so all my managers had the same goal <laughs> for me. It's just not the goal I wanted because there is another position that I wanted, but my all of my managers, whether it was my hotel director, my my um, 
my chief purser or my assistant purser, they all had the same goal for me. I wasn't willing to go with that goal because it's not the goal that I wanted. But sometimes you have to figure out what it is that they see in you, that they are pushing this, that it's consistently everybody that you're with that's saying, hey, you'd be good at this, or this is my goal for you. And sometimes you need to reflect on maybe why that is. It doesn't necessarily have to be the goal that you work towards, but sometimes people don't realize that some of these goals are because that there's something in them that other people see that they can't see for themselves. So sometimes you just need to take a step back and realize that you do have the strength or you do have the ability to do it even when you don't think you can and see that there are those characteristics that you have that you can push forward even if you think you can't or even if you think you don't want to or you can use those to do what you actually want to do so so what was it that you did because if you have if you have many leadership and different many different leaders um that you're working with telling you the same the same narrative what what did you do did you take upon it did you learn that maybe they were seeing something in you that you weren't seeing or did you learn to put like boundaries and saying nope i, I create my own goals rather than you telling me what my goals will be <laughs> no at the end i let my manager kind of start teaching me i had to leave anyway for personal reasons um but i kind of just went with it and i was just like you know what let me just learn how to do this because at the end of the day if anything happened at least I had that knowledge and training and the position I wanted was an HR manager position. So if I learned everything that my manager was teaching me anyway, um, it would help me in the HR position anyway, because in the last company that I was in, it was just smaller and the chief purser did more. So they did payroll, they did, um, like medical evacuations. They were the ones that gave crew members money if they needed to go to the doctor. They actually had more responsibility than the HR managers when I worked on Royal, who I worked under. So if you have that responsibility and understanding how to do the position, it would actually help you in the HR management role. So she was teaching me how to do payroll and some other stuff. She literally was just like, I don't care what you want. You're going to sit next to me and you're just going to learn because I know that you can do it. When I, when I started with the last company I was in, the hotel director actually came from celebrity and I'm not the Christian, you know me, I'm not the kind of person that sits around and watches people fail. Like I was training and because I came from working on a cruise ship, I literally, as she was training me, they were short staffed and I just kept answering the phone. I'm like, just show me how to answer the phone. Then I would put it on hold and I would ask my trainer what the answer was. And I'm like, okay, all you have to do is this. Yep. No worries. We got that covered. And so like everybody would just come to the desk and look at me like, how, how, how do you know what to do? And I'm like, I don't, I'm just pretending like I do. <laughs> And so my HD that I had my first week on board, my last company, he came to me and he was just like, so I think you need to be chief purser. Um, and he, he's like, just give us two contracts. I know it's different from what you came from. And he could see it in my face. I'm like, I don't know if this is the company for me. He's like, just give it two contracts. Just try it out. After two contracts, you'll probably like it more. It's just different than what I was used to because it, it's a small riverboat company in the US. And I'm used to like Oasis class ships. I'm used to everything, you know, even if things go bad, you know, we just pull together and we make it work. And coming to a smaller company where it's really different and, you know, you've got crew members arguing in the dining room and guests coming and yelling at you because the river is too low. Like those are different, different situations than what we had before or the heat not working and trying to get guests to move cabins and, you know, different from what we were used to. And then also still being offered up to work as a kids club specialist because the HR manager that we worked with also used to be a kids club employee on Disney. So one night, like every company I've worked for, if they don't have a kids club has always pulled me in, whether it be Asmara or American Queen Voyages. They're like, oh, you have experience with kids. Oh, can you do this? And like, I helped out, I just help out, like, you know how it is. So they just kind of see those those qualities in you and they're just like, oh yes, you can do this. And it's not that I can't do it. It's not that. It's just that sometimes my priorities, like I, there's 
I came from working at the front desk. I came from working in the kids club. I went to HR and I really like it. So that's where my path, I want it to go. But sometimes you have to kind of take the snaky path to get to where you want to go. Sometimes it's not always a straight line. Sometimes it curves around and you have to take the opportunities that are given to you to get to where you want to go. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. The path to success is not a straight line. It's, it's wavy and curly and wobbly, 100%. Lesson learned, you never tell people that you work with children because they will ask you to babysit. <laughs> always, always. Uh, <laughs> well, Amina, thank you so much, Michelle. Well, Amina, did you have something? Did you have your hand raised? Oh, I can just add up that um, from working with um, Hola Inc. and Hermes and Ship to Shore, so I understand that wisdom comes with age and experiences, so that's why I'm leaning on Christian and Barbara for um, the tasks that were assigned to me. So. I'm not really on social media, but then they asked me to do them. So, okay, I'll try. So, so that's why it's very important. Like um, what Michelle and um, said earlier, that it's important to also hear other people's opinion and plans for you because they are more experienced. They know your capabilities. Um, sometimes we are not um, aware that we could do this, but then uh, for other, um, if other people are going to say uh, or to tell you that I think you can do this. And you can give it a try and to be um, more out of your comfort zone. And another thing with IV and Christian is that if you are working or if you are living with a partner, it helps also to share your financial goals with them so you could work together because you're into that zone. So you could also nudge with each other if you're going off the track. Absolutely. That's not always good, but it's 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 helpful. Argue with each other and to have a bouncing wall rather than have it um, discussed with other people who are not onto that um area. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, yeah. So um, I, I think we all agree on, on 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 the beauty of this and 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 the fact that it works, right? That that it's important to write it down, to write the vision. Um, remember, um, the bumper sticker that I told you in the beginning. Uh. A goal without a plan is just a wish. So let's not just wish for stuff. Let's let's have our goal set for the last quarter of the year, for the next 10 weeks that we have left of 2023, 75 days to go. And then more so, let's plan for 2024. So that, I mean, the big stuff and the small stuff, I myself am going to start from the small stuff, whether it be decluttering my home or the closet or deleting all contacts or, um, I don't I think Ivy, you mentioned uh, uploading your photos. Or, um, you know, my cloud is just, I just keep buying extra storage and I'm telling myself one day I'm going to go in there and I'm going to clean it. Uh, I'm not, not going to fall into the Google trap of buying extra storage. And I ended up doing it just because those messages just got so annoying and I didn't want to erase any of my memories from ships. But um, the, the smartest thing would have been to put time aside and then deleted contacts or deleted files or big files rather than, than buying extra storage. Mm -hmm. But it's just stuff that we continue putting up to the side and then all of a sudden we feel overwhelmed. So Hopefully we can, with this, um, it's something that's going to help us so that we can start from the little stuff and then move on to the, into the bigger stuff. Um, and, and like Sebastian mentioned, it's always motivational with that 33% that we look up to, continue to learn. The people that we're surrounding ourselves with, like I can tell you guys, like everyone here in the webinar, you are the 33% that we're, that we're living our life with and that you're showing up. And I thank you so much for being the constant ones in the webinars and, and, and helping us and supporting us. Um, not a day goes by that we don't notice your, your presence. And also for the people that look up to us, our friends, our family, our neighbors, our colleagues, the people that, that we inspire, right? And, and you don't know it. Sometimes they will tell you, and, and a lot of the times I, I wouldn't be able to tell you who are the people I inspire. But then down the road, some people will look back and will tell you, you know what, you said something at that day, and, and then we did something that day, but um, I don't pat myself on the back. It's not us. It's, it's just the way that we're living life, and, and sometimes there's perfect timing and perfect synchrony in what we do, and it just works out for the 33 that we inspire just as well. So let's continue showing up. Let's continue being consistent. Um, consistency versus intensity. Uh, even if we give it the 1%, but just showing up every day. And I myself, I'm going to continue being old school. I'm going to write it on the piece of paper because I love that sound when you scratch it up with a pencil. Um, there's goals that I will continue doing in pencil, but there's some that I'm going to keep on a pen and a marker because I don't want those gone from my head and from the vision. Um, remember, 
to check with your core values. It has to be something that you're truly, truly inspired. Like what Michelle said, right? You're being asked to do stuff that maybe was not in your core values, but also maybe it's not because you don't see it, but also maybe it's something that you're sabotaging and something that other people see in you. So if you have seven managers telling you that you should step up and you're saying, oh no, that's not my goal. Is it really maybe not, maybe do you not see it? Or maybe if you really don't want it, then there's nothing wrong with it, right? I had a friend that for 15 years, he, he was offered um, to step up every single contract. You, you should step up, you should be a manager. And he, he did not enjoy the responsibility. He said, no, I love doing what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. But I, and at the end of the 15 years, he was making the same paycheck that a manager was making, but he continued doing what he loved and nothing wrong with it. I mean, we just have to be true to ourselves and not live the life that others expect us to live or do something that we're not, we're not enjoying to do. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for your input. Thank you for um, your contributions and for making this webinar uh, so much more enriching for those that will hear it.